Energy Frontier Research Center is a research organization here at the, the University of Texas. We're interested in understanding charge transport and you know, other problems in organic semiconductors for the purpose of converting the, uh, the sun's energy to usable electrical power. And most of my students work on the problem of uh, solar energy conversion. We're trying to find a way to, to produce much more efficient next generation solar cells and based on plastic, which is something we can produce very large quantity, very cheap. Organic semiconductors are, are materials which are far cheaper uh, to produce and far easier to, um, to make, uh, especially in large area devices. That's, I think, the key. You know, we know how cheap we can produce plastic, right? You know, companies can be, you know, make rows, big rows of rows of plastic. If we can make solar cells that way, then the pro energy problem will be solved. So the idea you can apply organic semiconductors uh, like you would a paint. This is an example of one of the most popular semiconducting polymers uh, called poly-3-hexylthiophene or just P3-HT for short. This polymer is especially shiny because um, it has the, the ability to conduct electricity. You can potentially print organic materials much like you would uh, you know, with an inkjet printer or roll to roll like printing newspaper. The advantage is obvious. I mean, you, you can imagine the, uh, you can, you know, let's say ideal picture would be you buy uh, several gallons of paint, you coat your house with several layers of paint, that's a solar cell. So that's the, that's the future. I mean, it's, it's doable. Right now it's extremely inefficient. So how can we do that? Semiconductors work because we can switch them from insulating uh, when we want them to be insulating and conducting when we want them to be conducting. It's really the binary ones and zeros of computing. Silicon is, a, is an excellent conductor, uh, primarily because you can be made in such high purity. In silicon, everything's perfect, near perfect. So the electron moves really fast. That's how we got all these Intel chips getting faster and faster. Silicon is just almost perfect. But plastic is just completely imperfect. So we need to develop a new understanding how charge actually moves in those imperfect, imperfect materials. One of the problems that we wanted to understand when we started writing this paper was why charges get trapped in organic semiconductor materials. And this here is my little model of, a, of an organic semiconductor material. I'll vibrate this thing to simulate the temperature, the thermal agitation of charge carriers, and then I'll tilt it to simulate the voltage of drawing current through the material. Or one of the major findings we, we wanted to report was that these the charge carriers moving through the organic semiconductor film could be trapped, uh, trapped by grain boundaries in the material. And not so much that they were trapped on a grain boundary, but trapped by the grain boundary. Much in the same way that your dog is trapped in your yard by the fence and not on the fence. If the, if the electron moves slow, why? Okay, what structure is it responsible for that moving so slow? Then I say, okay, now we come up with design principles. We shine lasers at, at our samples, and by looking at the light or electrons coming off of our samples, we can learn things about the physical interactions and understand the underlying electronic properties of the materials, which make them um, so potentially useful. You know, people like to borrow concepts from what's uh, developed in silicon to these materials. Sometimes it's, it's a problem. You see, the silicon language mainly came from physics, electrical engineering, and the plastic came from chemistry. And now you need to mix the chemistry language in, 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 into that context. That's the trick. The article that we wrote, it's designed to present an overall context for organic semiconductor research. And it, we're hoping that it's broad enough in its scope that it, it allows researchers looking at different aspects of the problem to sort of compare notes. When you pick a research project, you can, you know, I'm always interested in fundamental problems, but you can pick a problem which is ivory tower problem. Nobody gives a damn, right? I mean, nobody cares. Or you can prob pick a problem which uh, still answers the same physics questions, but uh, will have a really big impact to the society. Next 20, 50 years, we, we have to switch from fossil fuel economy to solar energy economy. There's no, no other way around.